two regarding labor negotiations. There's nothing to report. Thank you. Um, item D, agenda. Any changes, comments on the agenda? Second. Any questions, comments? Chief, I was wondering, the overtime jumped. We had a strike team assignment. First period to second. Yeah. We had a strike team assignment, so that would be reimbursable. That was it. Yeah. Okay. Anything else from the board? Uh, comments from the public on the consent calendar? Linda? Um, I wanted to ask where, now I know it was on 629, June 29th, we had the first music in the park. Where is the billing for that? Um, I don't think it came out of the June. I think it would. I think it's going to come out of the July billings, not the June billings. So you don't have the bill yet, or you haven't paid it yet. That's not how it really works. We usually just pay the band. We don't. We don't. Okay, so it'll come up eventually. Yeah. Thank you. And the other question I had was. Um, I have seen billing for Hansel and his $125 an hour billing for the architectural work. And I saw it through middle of May. So I'd like to ask where is the end of May and where is all of June? Whatever I've sent you is all that we have. But that was a couple weeks ago. Yeah, right. He hasn't done any extra so work. Nothing, he hasn't done any nothing for the last system. end of May. And I've sent you every invoice he has sent us. Okay, thank you. Anything else from the public? Right, I'll call the question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, now we're on item F, public comment open time for items not on the agenda. And I'll just remind you, speakers are asked to limit their comments to three minutes. Any comments from the public? Yeah, I'm sure they're all You can take something else first. Oh, uh, go ahead. Oh, okay. thank you. Um, this is about the um, park facilities, new maintenance shed. Okay, what I was looking at is the, um, the there were two bidders for this thing, and the first bidder had a total of thirteen thousand four hundred dollars, 
which was um, assuming that there was a construction budget of 100 grand, and that was for planning the site, review, doing the construction documents, plans, elevations, construction details, schedules, etc., and contract. Uh, I'm sorry, construction contract administration for a total of $13,400. And with Mr. Hansel, his thing was really, really, you know, blah, 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 at $125 per hour with, it was kind of like an open-ended contract, so we really didn't know how much he was going to charge for all this stuff. And back in, uh, I guess it was March, I asked something about the $12,000 that had been set aside, saying and Mr. Uh, the district manager said that there was $12,000 set aside for his architectural expertise. And when I asked about it at the 213 meeting, the director's, uh, district manager said it was a fair cost and all encompassing. But now already for just two and a half months, he has charged us $11,000. And if $12,000 is all encompassing, I think we're going to be way, way, way over $12,000 at his $125 an hour. Um, once you get to be $25,000 for his services, I believe you have to have a um, closed bidding. Isn't that what happened with the kitchen? Closed bidding over $25,000. Oh, so you're saying that a, a, an architect, doesn't matter how much an architect costs, you don't have to have closed bidding for architectural service. Okay, that's fine. Uh, this is just my comments. It's apparent that Mr. Hansel has designed this huge building that appears to be an Eichler with four skylights. And if you don't believe me, you could look at the Eichler that's across the street from the tennis courts on the corner of Miller Creek Road and Idleberry. It looks just like that Eichler over there. And I think the cost is going to be quite substantial. And I also think there's one efficiency design and safety issue that I am really concerned about, and that's the uh, driving through the, the building from one end to the other. The building and the end storage units are 150 feet long, and the design is for to drive through the building from one end to the other. And I think that's really crazy when you're not going to be driving through the building that often. And in order to, you can't turn around, you have to have all that empty space. You've got so this. That's, that's three minutes. Can you wrap up, please? Excuse me? That's, that's the end of three minutes. Of it. You're limited to okay. Three minutes, so. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, other comment, public comments? Uh, I'd, I'd like to talk about my name's Donald Brown, the um, maintenance shed also. At the last meeting that three of us were invited to, we were told that there would be a, another public meeting and nothing would be moving forward without a public meeting, and I haven't heard anything. All I keep hearing is it's going to happen. So what's the status? Public meeting next Thursday. Okay, so, so why hasn't, like, the community received any notice of Okay, I haven't I'm seen it. Time, so. No, that's right. I haven't seen it on next door, and I haven't seen it posted anywhere. Or, I mean, maybe we can run something in the IJ or the Winslow Marinwood Review coming out. Maybe we could. That's quarterly. That's, that's quarterly. Okay. Or three times a year. Because I think that you know, Marinwood residents are going to be paying for this. They need to know what it's going to look like and how much we're spending and all that. I've gotten three emails from Eric. Did you mind there was yes. one that okay. he emailed out, um, I believe it was through Nextdoor. Okay, I haven't received um, anything. So I, I think it's depending anything. on your alerts, but I, I believe I've gotten three different notices. Yeah. So, so Eric, right. maybe yes, I could just, uh, uh, hi, got it. Uh, uh, briefly, um, the meeting next week is, is specifically about the uh, mitigated negative declaration that went out as, as well as the corresponding initial study. It uh, was sent out to everybody who is on the district's agenda list, which uh, I'm happy to add you to at any point in time. Uh, and, uh, it was noticed in the IJ 
It was sent out via the uh, uh, next door. I don't know where it was put on there. And there's also a signboard that's now up out in front of the current shed that has the notice blown up and placed on that as well. Um, it's placed out front uh, in the kiosk as well, and we're certainly trying to get the word out. It was sent to every uh, applicable environmental agency. And so it's certainly been blasted out there the best that we can do. I can only uh, leave people so close to the water, so to speak, but I'm happy to add you. Uh, if you could send me an email tomorrow and just say, please add me to the agenda distribution list, uh, I would gladly put you on. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Other public comments? Yeah. Um, you go I'm, ahead. I'm sorry, sideways, but here we are. I'm Judy Shreesman. Um, I'm actually in Galena's watershed, but I came today to just say I was I was out looking. I just love the Brinwood watershed. It is so beautiful. It's got fish. It's wonderful. In the Galena's watershed, we've got a cement ditch in our backyard. And in order to protect and properly manage a creek, I wanted to bring this book to your group. This is done by Ann Riley, who's a premier water restoration person with regional water in San Francisco. And it shows really wonderfully well in, in descriptions that may not be intuitively obvious what good creek management is and what bad creek management is. And sometimes what we think we're doing is really well done, like the ditch in Terralinda, turns out to be not so good. So I just wanted to present this to you. And, and Eric, I think you're the GM, so. You'd be the one to pass it on to staff as you work with this wonderful resource that we call Miller Creek. It's, um, it's near and dear to a lot of our hearts because the other side of the hill is a ditch with algae in it. This is a creek with fish and wonderful things in it, and we really treasure it. And I'm with the Galenas Watershed Council, and also put my hand in at the Miller Creek Watershed Stewards. I work with the Dixie Outdoor Classroom up the stream and store in that area. I have concerns about the maintenance here too, but we'll just send them to that. Okay, well thank you very much. Uh, any other, Stephen? Yeah, so, um, <coughs> so I have plenty to say, but I'm gonna only focus on one thing. This is a scale model of the shed, and I'd like to show it to everybody. And um, I'm really actually sorry to say that Design-wise, we have a white elephant. This is a scale model, and it's a long, narrow uh, facility. And the problem with it is it's 20 feet across, 40 feet across, and the truck, this is a scale truck, uh, is 22 feet. And the problem with it going in these 40 by 40 uh, chambers is there's really no place efficiently to park the truck without uh, a lot of space being left open and wasted for access. Um, it will require uh, a long way to back out or to drive through. If it drives through, this is the uh, brake area, it drives right in front of the brake room, putting in you know, toxic uh, exhaust into the brake room, so they'll need filtration there. And then it goes out in the back, um, this is 150 foot length. It spans two uh, uh, two house households, two lots. But when you go out of the back, then you have to turn around. You need at least 30 feet to turn around a uh, Ford F-250 truck. And there's really no space there. So I was wondering, what are they going to do? Are you going to build up the, the creek bank? What is that what's going to happen? But I actually found out the answer today, observing uh, and what they're doing now is they're driving all the way through the nature park and they're going through the meadow and they're turning around on the meadow, heavy equipment in the meadow. And this, if they built this white elephant, that, that's basically what you're talking about is expanding the current footprint of this whole complex almost double. Um, in the design review, they even indicate that there's no room for the materials and the dump truck and the trailer. So that's going to be outside the facility. It's, um, there's really only one facility that will work, and I've sent you all uh, copies of it. Basically, it's a side entrance garage, which virtually every maintenance facility I've seen has. But that would be narrow, uh, 30 feet wide. 
And uh, if you keep it open here, you have plenty of access, easy access, because each bay is individually accessible. If you want, uh, if you want a, a, a work area, just back out your truck and you've got along the back walls, and you've seen this in shops and stuff, you have all your tool storage and, and material storage. So this is the most efficient, that's the most efficient design. This, unfortunately, needs to go back to the drawing board. And uh, if we do this, I'm afraid Rinwood will be very famous. Right, thank you for your comments. It will be bankrupt. Any other public comments? For items not on the agenda. All right, moving on to item G, district matters. Item one, fiscal year 2017-18 audit engagement with R.J. McCarty. And we are being asked to approve it. Right. Yeah, I put a pretty detailed uh, lead-in memo on there. I certainly strongly recommend we continue to move forward with uh, our favorite DR. Well, soon we're going to have to switch to them because of the assembly bill that I also listed in there, which changes part of the government code on that. Uh, but at this point in time, uh, I recommend we continue to move forward. So, second. I, I just want to say I appreciate your thoughts on the paper regarding it because I was one of the people, well, probably the one who suggested you know exploring other um, auditors, just you know fresh set of eyes, etc. But I can certainly see that this person is an expert in this subject matter, and so it only makes sense to continue. And uh, again, given that we'll have to outsource the, uh, uh, what all it would be? Yeah, yeah the, no, the GASB is the separate part of, um, what, what's the other? Uh, the OPEP, uh, There's uh, another um, audit that needs to be done with audit that uh, I'm lacking the word now. Anyhow, I'm forward for all. We'll come back to it. Yes. Any other uh, comments from the board? Okay. Yeah. No, I agree with Isabella's sentiments. Uh, comments from the public? Is on McCarty? Yes. Uh, yeah. Comments here. Uh, we've used McCarty for a really long time. We, uh, I think, about eight years ago, seven years ago, we used another firm that gave us a bad rating and then we went back to Riccardi and we seemed to get good ratings from Riccardi. I think uh, in the interest of uh, you know good good rigor on, rigor on our uh, 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 that we need to, to hire a different firm and prob probably just work with different firms every number of years um, to so we don't get caught in a rough. Okay. Thank you. I'll call the question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Motion carries. Item G2, update Renwood CSD Emergency Services Succession Committee. So we have not met since the last meeting, and there is nothing to report. Everything right now is at a staff level. So certainly there will, we'll report when we have something for you. I would say uh, I had an oversight <coughs> that from the June meeting, which I think was like the day before oh. the June board meeting, okay. I, uh, I completely forgot to put the minutes in here for that. Oh. Uh, so either the net, whatever comes first, the next board meeting or the next uh, uh, ESS meeting, uh, it'll be presented at that time. Questions, comments from the board? Any questions, comments from the public? Linda? Um, I recall at the last ESS meeting, committee meeting, there was, I had asked uh, why there weren't any meetings going on, and they said, oh, we're waiting for San Rafael, we're waiting for San Rafael. Well, we've been waiting for San Rafael for over three months. And I believe at the time of the last committee meeting, when I said, well, why aren't we working on other things such as Plan B, Plan C, Plan D, Plan E, because everything seems to be just plunked on San Rafael and their oversight. 
and I think somebody said in the meeting, oh yes, we're going to get into that, we're going to get into other options, but I haven't seen any other options. It doesn't seem like anybody's meeting, so why even have this committee if nobody's meeting to discuss other options? Okay, other options are very, very important depending on how Sam Rafael comes back to us and says, yeah, we don't want to do it. Or we want to do it, it's going to cost you this much. And Marin was going to say, ah, can't pay that much. So please have some meetings where you're talking about other options. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments, questions from the public on that item? All right, moving on. Yeah, I, I do. I do raise my hand. Stephen? Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, in terms of having other options, absolutely, it's important. I don't think anyone goes into negotiation expecting a good deal if they only have one option out there. And, um, uh, you know, I've said this before, uh, maybe maybe we'll be at peace with North Korea before we, we uh, get a deal with San Rafael. And one way to, uh, uh, you know, accelerate the process is to have tangible alternatives. Um, so, uh, it's not being done, I don't know why, but uh, I think out of the interest of the, the, uh, the voters, uh, we need to get this uh, issue behind us. Absolutely, thank you. Uh, all right, moving on to item G, oh, G for D, District Manager Report. Okay, uh, <clears throat> well we've already heard a Quite a bit on the park maintenance. The only thing I really have in here on the park maintenance is again uh, just talking about the uh, negative declaration and the initial study that is uh, going through a 30 day review period at this point in time. July 26, 5 o'clock, will be a uh, public hearing where the district will receive comments on it. Comments can also be submitted in writing. Um, again, the release is out there and it's posted. Uh, and uh, happy to resend it to anybody who needs it. Um, or it's clearly on our website as well, the URL is in there. Um, and that meeting, again, will be specific towards the environmental study. It's not uh, necessarily looking at the project as a whole, it's looking at the environmental impact of the, of the proposal. Um, and that all falls in line with CEQA, which is the California Environmental Quality Act. Um, FEMA, we finally got some more movement on our FEMA and OES claims that are out there. Um, uh, OES now has taken the lead on it, which seems to actually be a, a positive in the world of uh, government leadership to move from federal to state in this level. Uh, so that is progressing, um, and I'm sure the chief will touch on it a little bit in his report, um, but they, we did finish up the repairs uh, a lot. I actually give him all the credit working with the county and the right people uh, to the Queenstone Fire Road. So that has moved forward. Um, the damages uh, along the creek banks here are still in the eligibility review process. Uh, now that we've got a new person in, I've actually resent them the same engineering geotechnical reports that I sent back in December that seem to have never gotten to the right desks uh, with their transitions with people over there. So they're re-reviewing all that. Hopefully we should have a determination on that at some point in the near future. Um, and then other items of note, uh, obviously, uh, myself, uh, along with Carolyn's help, and as well as uh, Luke uh, and Robin on the thing, we're wrapping up, uh, trying to get our year-end accounting procedures uh, wrapped up so that way we can take a look at where we close the year and feel good about the numbers. Um, I'm continuing to work with Nicolay Consulting on the OPEB actuarial study. They've actually performed our GASB 75 accounting needs. Um, and those, that, that has to deal with uh, other post-employment benefits, which in our world is basically retiring health, uh, and all those numbers have been reported to our trust uh, with CalPERS, because that's part of the requirement of that. So we're up to speed on all that as well. Um, that's really been kind of the bulk of it, uh, in addition to all the other things that are uh, in here as agenda items. All right. Questions, comments from the board? It was the all group study. Okay. Here. <laughs> close that. Other questions, comments from the board? Okay. Questions, comments from the public? Linda? A question. Um, I, it took me a while to understand what the negative, 
a negative declaration was. And what you're saying is that there's a California law or ordinance or something that says as long as you do a negative declaration pointing out the negative things that are in this plan of yours to replace the maintenance shed, as long as you put that out there and then you put in your mitigating improvements or facts or ideas or whatever, then you do not have to do an environmental impact report? This is a version of an environmental, it's an environmental impact assessment is what it is. And, and EIR usually is for a much larger scope of a project. This uh, carries through, you know, I also wanted to point out that within the study that went out, every piece of information that was taken there was either taken directly from land use codes uh, from the county or taken from the reports that were produced by certified third parties. <coughs> okay. The biological assessment or the archaeological and cultural resources report that was done. So the mitigations are basically copy and paste for the most part directly from those studies from what the experts say this could have a potential significant effect. Uh, this is how it would be mitigated to have less than a significant impact or no impact. Okay, so it's be base, basically based on the size of the project. Uh, I would probably defer to Irv. He knows a little bit more about EIR versus initial study. There's, there's a number of categories uh, in the <coughs> CEQA guidelines. One of the first thing are pro projects that are categorically exempt, and there's a specific uh, listing of those and theoretically replacement of an existing facility which we are proposing to do could fall into a categorical exemption and not require an initial study or a negative declaration however in this particular case we moved up one step because of the fact that we are within the stream conservation area of Miller Creek and that's what caused us to need to go through an initial study which looks at all the environmental impacts or potential impacts. Based on that initial study, it was determined that all of the impacts pointed out or developed by the various third party studies could be mitigated by various means. Uh, for instance, if there was a concern with uh, birds nesting in the tree, the, the pine tree that would have to come out, uh, there's a timing requirement so that tree would not have to be taken out uh, except after the nesting season. Right, yeah, that's, yeah. That's, a, that's a mitigation. Uh, okay. So the, the next step, if it were bigger, if we couldn't mitigate all the impacts, would be to do a full environmental impact report. But it didn't rise to that level. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, actually, two things. Um, first of all, uh, with regards to the notifications, um, I take issue with the characterization that uh, there's been a lot of information on this. Uh, I had been in touch with Eric during the month of June and asked him when they were going to do a submittal, and I had a series of emails, nothing, 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 basically trying to take me off the scent that something was uh, uh, preeminent and certainly right before on 5 o'clock on the uh, 4th of July weekend he releases the NAG deck. Now as far as the NAG deck is concerned, um, the NAG deck is based on the underlying data. That assumes that the data supplied to the county is accurate and correct and we know from the mapping that that is not correct. And uh, so uh, all the information that flows from the base information that you're providing the county is in question. Um, and I guess your <coughs> experts also, if they got the wrong data, it, there's, uh, there's a problem. A uh, couple of the problems are you're not identifying the road. You've got creek uh, uh, stream bed that's not accurately described. For some reason, uh, there was a 20-foot setback from the creek. It's not there. It's 100 feet. 
uh, and this was completely was not submitted as part of the uh, NAG deck. So we're going to have lots of issues with that. Uh, my hope is that we don't have to go down that route. Uh, we do have other alternative sites that are not uh, problematic, um, and uh, I had hoped the public process would bring this out prior to submittal, but you uh, instead decided to submit and you're the lead agency, which gives you lots of influence. So uh, our choices are very, as citizens, uh, our choices are very uh, slim, and uh, I would hope that we, we would all prefer uh, uh, a democratic exchange of ideas uh, rather than a, uh, the path that's, that's being taken right now. All right, thank you. Uh, moving on to item H, fire department matters. Uh, one fire activity summary and chief report. Uh, just real briefly, it's wildland season. We had a ten and a half day strike team assignment to Lake Yolo and Klamath National Forest. All those costs will be reimbursed um, through the state. Uh, hopefully coming in the, in the next few weeks. Um, been busy finishing up the Queenstone Fire Road project. I've uh, been busy working with CSA 13, develop, making it a firewise community, which is actually pretty cool. A lot of work went into that, and Kelly Jones was the uh, lead person in the community that finished that up. It would be a worthwhile project for someone to take on in Marimlet. Um, I'm going to be the sheets to see if I can find someone to help me with that. Uh, I know the guy that's retiring pretty soon. He's got some time on his end. Yeah. You're going to be all fine now. The wine's gone. Kitchen remodel is underway. The cabinets went in. Countertops are going in on the 27th. The appliances are going in on the 30th and 31st. And then it should be done. So there's actually a D-Day. There is a D-Day, yes. Any questions on the Chief? Do you have a legal bar in the range? It's open fire pit. Oh, yeah. You can't do it on red flag days, and if you are going to do it on a non-red flag day, it's got to have a spark restaurant on it. Okay. Questions, comments from the public? Yeah, right. I, I, I do. Just quickly on Mira, can we have an idea what's going on with Mira and the, the radios and stuff like that? I'm not prepared to speak on Mira right now. That's not on the agenda, I'm sorry. What's that? It's not on the agenda. Uh, he, he reports it in his, his chief's report. And I didn't see it in the chief's report. Well, are you refusing then to talk about Mira because it is, uh, uh, he's our appointed representative. The next gen system is underway. They signed a contract with Motorola to be the vendor and they're developing certain additional sites. And when, when does that uh, happen? When will the system be complete? I, 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 I mean, what? 2020, 2021. But we've already paid for it, I guess. So let's hold that until it's actually on the agenda. Thank you. Uh -huh. If you have questions, you send me an email. <coughs> Stephen will happy to answer any questions. Any other questions, comments from the public? All right. Looks like the date of the next fire commission meeting is August 7th. Then we have item H. We're doing well in time. Thank you, everybody. Park and Recreation Matters. Item 1. Draft minutes of the DNR commission meeting of June 16th. Any questions? Any questions or comments from the public? All right. Moving on to item I two. So yeah, I, I, I got the one <laughs> one point on the, the park and rec okay. commission. So uh, during the park and rec commission, one of the commissioners suggested that uh, the music here was really irritating, in particular the mariachi music. Um, and that I, it, was, it was shot down by the other commissioners, but I was absolutely horrified at the, the insensitivity, the cultural insensitivity with the common. And I, I think that uh, we have to be very careful if we are going to, uh, we're, we're going to do any kind of sound mitigation here that we, we are objective and uh, certainly not target one type of music over another. Um, I, I'm sorry, but I need to respond to this because it is very inaccurate and it was not 
culturally insensitive at all. It was just referring to the decibels, and we were actually mentioning how a decibel measurement is the only objective one. The person who voiced the uh, issue um, said, is, is a neighbor, lives nearby, that's why he was able to hear the music. The reason we put the uh, HVAC system into the large room is so we can keep the windows closed. The HVAC system might have not been operational. For some reason, the windows were left open. And Luke, recommend, uh, Luke um, uh, volunteered to get in touch with the uh, attendant of the building to make sure that the windows are closed and neighbors uh, do not experience any nuisance. In no way, shape, or form was it culturally insensitive. It was barely a, a noise issue. And please don't misrepresent the discussion. Uh, I, I have it on tape, and I'll be happy to make it public. But I don't really want to embarrass I'm sorry, the, the I'm person. Sorry, but but the, I, I, I am. Issue, you're the, you're the now challenging issue. my interpretation of the event, Certainly which is which is not is to, not right. I you're mean, you're, you're place your video recording on your website to increase your self-promotion. I don't it's, need to it's, it's, promote myself. And I frankly don't want the, the, this to, to go any further than this room. But I do think I wanted to make it uh, people aware of it because it was a very insensitive um, uh, uh, remark. OK? Absolutely. Oh. Thank you for your comment. Uh, looks like item 13, moving to item 14, consent Hearing none, moving on to item two. Request for right of encroachment on district property, APN 164621 10. Eric, can I pass this over to you? Yeah. So I, uh, again, have a lead in uh, memo to the board on this. This is a uh, request from a resident at one Verbena Court who uh, has a fence line that runs alongside Westgate Drive that they recently redid. A, a portion of it uh, appears to encroach into district property uh, on a single line fence. Uh, so not expanding the, the lot, just making the line of the fence go down. Again, I've kind of put everything into this uh, memo. I've talked to the property owner. I've visited the site. Um, and what they are requesting is uh, for the fence line to be able to stay as constructed uh, uh, I will say, again, I've been out there. Um, I personally don't think that it uh, blocks access to the open space. This house backs up to an open area um, that uh, it does have some accessible areas to the homes that live on it. I don't know that I uh, personally believe that it blocks access to that area. Um, I think it, uh, in looking at it, uh, <clears throat> I don't know how that it's very accessible right where this fence is built anyway. Uh, with that said, I am sure that there are plenty of people here who have commented about this. Uh, so in looking at it, uh, I will leave it with that uh, and the memo that I put in the packet. Okay, so we need, um, uh, is there a, do we have a motion? Uh, yeah, I'll make a motion to approve the Myself, owning property that backs to Lucas Valley Road, I'm very familiar with the noise and the lights that might be an issue um, when uh, vehicular traffic is nearby. I am confused by the letter stating um, the lack of privacy and then seeing the netting fence that's just it does not add up uh, because if your issue is a privacy then I'm putting a solid wood fence to to have more privacy on my uh, property also um, another way to add to privacy is uh, with appropriate foliage uh, or landscaping and um, I, I'm really in a huge favor of being equitable and um, not providing exemptions to a policy that 
has been standing for years now. Um, so I'm sorry, but I I would not be voting to approve this exemption unless otherwise convinced suddenly. Okay, other board members here. I've, I've taken a look at it also, and the fence was extended about 13 feet into the open space property. It runs parallel to the right-of-way of Westgate Drive. The interesting thing is that um, if you're driving from Westgate, down Westgate, towards Lucas Valley Road, there's a curve in the road there, and so it puts the headlights towards the uh, into to the house, towards the house or the yard. And this section of fence appears to stop that combined with the trees that are there. Uh, yes, I suppose they could build a solid board fence to stop the headlights all across their back, but it appears they're trying to take advantage of the open space parcel behind their property, and they have a uh, fence that you can see through. Uh, it, looking at it, it the, where the fence is located is at the top of a relatively steep bank. Uh, it's easy to go around and go into the open space. It doesn't stop anyone from doing that. Uh, I think it's unfortunate that they built the fence and then asked for permission. It would have been much nicer to ask for permission, see if they got it, and then build the fence. But I don't have a real problem with that short section of fence. I do have a problem, however, with the fact that they appear to be storing large amounts of flagstone outside of their backyard fence on our property. And I think as a condition of allowing their fence to stay, all that flagstone and anything else that's behind their fence should be removed within two weeks. I never got a chance to get out there to see what the uh, problem was. Uh, just gotten this yesterday, but um, from what Fur was saying, uh, I'm hesitant all the way along, but uh, I'd have to say that since it's blocking the headlights, it's serving a purpose for them, but definitely have to get their materials removed. All right, thank you. I have now up to questions, comments from the public. Okay. My name is Robert Renfro, the property owner of the fence in question. One clarification I'd like to bring to you is that the, the portion of fence where the two panels are is a solid fence. It's a six foot tall solid fence. And then the portion of fence that from that 90 degree turn that goes behind the property into the open space is an open fence. Where that corner happens of the property and where the two panels extend past, the, the elevation drops 10 feet in a 16 foot section. So if the wire fence were solid, it wouldn't block the headlights of the oncoming traffic because of the elevation drop in the slope. Otherwise, having a solid fence in that corner would be a, a remedy or an answer. But if you actually had a solid fence in that, it wouldn't be high enough elevation if you're sticking with the six foot height code of the county in order to block the headlights. How about um, the planting? Excuse me? How about the planting of some sort of Well, the plantings would have to be able to grow if, if the plantings were out, were on Marinwood Community Services District property, and then plantings could be planted that potentially could block the headlights and, and give the privacy. If they were planted on our property because of the slope elevation, the decreasing slope elevation, the plants would have to grow to a mature height of 16 feet before they gave the same privacy block that the current 13 foot fence panel extension gives. Um, another concern of ours is that that's a very popular spot for bicyclists to park and ride their bicycles on Lucas Valley Road. It's also a spot that <clears throat> we've had issues with graffiti artists parking and going beneath the bridge to spray paint graffiti. I supplied pictures to Eric of all the graffiti under the bridge. It's a popular place where um, 
workers in the neighborhood stop and use the bathroom under the bridge. There's beer bottles and spray paint cans. There's toilet paper with that people have wiped themselves with all under the bridge. We've called the sheriff um, a couple of times on people that we've found, that we've heard underneath the bridge. And when they park there, it's easy for them to peer into our backyard. I have a two-year-old and a six-year-old daughter. My six-year-old daughter has is special needs. She falls under the American Disabilities Act, and she's unable to differentiate between a, a friend and a stranger. And when the cars park there, be it bicyclists parking right on Lucas Valley Road, or someone parking to spray paint graffiti under the bridge, they can easily see into our yard and could talk to our children. How, and our, I'm sorry, how, how can they see if you have a solid wood fence? They cannot see because of the two panels currently, but if the panels were to be removed when they park on that corner, because of the drop in elevation where the back fence is, that you can park there and you can see directly over top of the six foot fence into our yard. So in no way, shape or form would you be able to remedy the situation by putting a solid wood fence facing the open space and uh, creating foliage that would help you? That's correct. Because of the drop in elevation that occurs from the, the elevation at the street level, and then, in, and Irv, I believe you've been there, it's an immediate descent. The, the fence itself steps four feet with eight, each eight foot panel, four foot, three, four foot steps down and 12 feet. So the, the 13 foot panel that extends is what gives the privacy from people parking there and being able to see into the backyard, as well as headlights when cars drive down Westgate Drive, shining into our bedroom. And, and by putting the fence, you also stopped all the people going down, um, the artists and no, what, what that does is it stops those people who park there to access under the bridge from when they park there to be able to see into our backyard, just like it does with the bicyclist. I, I'm sorry, I was not able to see it in person. I, I came back from vacation today at 2 a.m., so I, I didn't want to be doing my research at that hour. Mm -hmm. um, and it might be something that I should have. Um, other questions? Thank you. <clears throat> uh, President Green, members of the board, my name is Len Rifkind. Did everybody get a copy of uh, my correspondence that I sent earlier? Mm -hmm. Everybody get a chance to read that? I have copies here. And also, may I approach? Yes. Thank you. Anybody else need a copy? Anybody else is listening to this? And for uh, Mr. DeCrosi, and ask anybody in the audience to uh, have extra time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, I don't profess to be an expert on the, uh, this uh, one verbena in the corner of. Verbena Court and Westgate and exactly the angles and whatnot, but the questions that uh, Director Perry has been asking are good ones. She wants to understand, could this issue with the fence be mitigated with fence and uh, with a solid wood fence and with landscaping? I'm happy to go through the pictures, you know, well, if, if you, I'm happy uh, to go through the pictures when we have a chance, but maybe I could have your attention just for a moment, that would be great. Um, what I want the board to focus on, what I think their issues, and I'm going to talk at a high level, is, you know, I did quote in my letter your mission statement. You know, your mission statement uh, that I quoted there is to preserve uh, district lands as open space. That's, that's what it says right there, to preserve open spaces for the enjoyments of the residents of the district. And then I cited your ordinance that you have on, on point, 2011-03, section 6, which uh, the district, through your, your manager, sent to the owner of the property and said, hey, take down your fence because you're in violation of our ordinance. And so the property owner properly is exercising their appeal rights to come before the board. But the ordinance is quite clear. It says you don't put stuff up in the open space without permission. So I'm suggesting to this board that you have a policy, at least uh, to decide, because think about how many, I don't know, how many homes are there in the Marinwood CSD? Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of homes. What's the total number? 1720. 
Thank you. I knew someone would know that number. <laughs> okay. And the fire chief is a good person to know that number. Um, 1720. So what happens if 1720 people start encroaching or 2% of 1720, 34 homes start encroaching. My point is, is that you should have a policy of when uh, about encroachments into open space. And it seems like a good policy would be to comply with your own mission statement, your own ordinance, and you allow encroachments when public safety demands it, when there's some really good public safety reason to do it. Now, the care and comfort of the resident at one Verbena says, hey, there's problems with headlights, um, and so I don't think that's a public safety issue. I think that ultimately anything can be resolved. Now, whether headlights actually go into the into the residence, we're accepting the representation that they do. I don't know if that's a fact. I don't know if anyone here in this room, other than the residents of One Verbena, have actually been in the home to say <coughs> that they've experienced that. I mean, it's not it's it's not a demonstrated fact that that's accurate the way it is. I've shown, there's pictures here, and yes, ultimately landscaping can resolve this problem. Um, I represent people all over Marin County, and landscaping is always the tool that helps mitigate impacts. So um, I'd like to just briefly go through some of the photos that I attached in the letter, just so that you can see them, because a fair amount of effort was made to put the, uh, the photographs together, just so we have the historic record. And, and Madam President, I appreciate your courtesy in giving me a few more minutes just to do the, the thing. So if we, does, it, does everybody have a, pic, uh, a copy of the packet so they can see picture? When I have more copies, if anybody needs one on the board. You guys good? Okay. Photo one, and, um, and this, by the way, the prior owner, I understand, was Jack Govey. And Jack Govey was a um, county council for decades with the county council's office. And there was quite significant landscaping around this property that blocked, perhaps, the headlights we're talking about. And in fact, part of the problem is not only these two fence panels, but I'm informed by the owners of Three Bourbon and my clients that l landscaping that's on district land was removed or clear cut. That's perhaps creating part of the problem that we have. Okay, that's not okay. You're not supposed to go onto district land and do anything without permission first. As, as Mr. Schwartz says, better to ask first and get permission. That's kind of the way you're supposed to do things. Okay, so photograph one shows a solid wood fence that was along Westgate Drive at that time and, and lush landscaping. There's not a headlight problem that Mr. Govey, who lived in that property for decades, has. Now we have a problem. It's self-induced. That is my point. Next slide uh, is more pictures of the same fence in that area. You see solid wood fence. You see lots of landscaping. Uh, picture 2B is actually taken from, it's, I'm sorry, it's dark, it's from the Westgate side, looking at it. All these photographs were actually found from on the internet when the home was for sale. So that, that's where all these photographs came. Picture 4 is interesting. Picture 4 is actually the two panels that were put up before the side yard fence was put up. So clearly the plan was from the beginning that they were going to put up the side yard fence. And then pictures 5, you got the debris and the, and the um, and the uh, district lands. Um, I think 6B is perhaps the most important. Maybe, maybe wrap it up. I will. I'll sure. promise I'll wrap it up in one minute because you've been very patient. Awesome. Thank, you. Thank you. Picture 6B is perhaps the most important one. And this is, and I walked this tonight uh, with Miss Lynn. And uh, I, I heard comments to say that, oh, there's plenty of access in other locations. I'm a pretty serious outdoor enthusiast person. I can tell you that the only readily easy access is right next to the fence line. Because if you go to the north on the other side of the street, it's steep and there's rocks. And if you go further north, uh, closer to the creek where I walked, it's actually full of brush and it's, it's a, it, and it was difficult. The only ready, readily easy access and where the Lynns for the last 24 years have had access is right along the fence line. And so I don't understand why we're going to consider giving a property owner use of district land that's going to adversely violate your mission statement and your ordinance. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for your courtesy. Thank you. Any other public comments on this item? Do you want to go first? He's already spoken. I think we okay. should give everyone a chance to speak before we have recourse. Okay, so uh, two points of clarification. 
Uh, first of all, how much land, two panels, and then I heard 13 feet. How much land, what square footage are we talking about? It's two eight-foot panels, 16 not. feet length. But how, how thick, thir by 13? There's nothing fenced There's no in. thickness, it's just two fence panels. The panels extend past the corner of the property line. They don't fence in any MCSD. Oh, property. okay, so literally just two fence panels width. Okay, so I'm glad to know that because this isn't clear. But I, I do want to make my point. Um, we, have a, we have a lawyer here. And one of the things we understand, property rights. I, oh, one other thing is, did we receive any value for the encroachment? And I don't believe we have. However, I, I think I'm going to kind of, I was going to go one way, and now I may go the other. Um, I think if it's two fence panels, literally two fence panels, I don't see that that's a huge issue. I do have a huge issue if someone's extending the property line into open space. But that doesn't, I, from the description, is that happening, Eric? No. no. Okay. So it's just two fence panels that are just, okay. So, so I don't know, I think. I think it would have been better if he, he planted trees uh, to do it, but uh, uh, I, I guess it's really not that much of an issue. So I, I don't have anything else to say. Hi. I'm Diane Lynn. I own for three Verbena Court, and we have enjoyed the open space, living back into the open space, walk almost daily, and um, up until the extension was built, I had a very clear path that we would take. Um, I think what's not clear or evident is when those, that extension was built, there was not only clearing of the vegetation, but they increased the slope. So now, yes, I can access the land, but it is difficult for me. It is filled with debris. The only, it, there are low branches that I need to, you know, duck under. There is, there are stickers and poison oak and that kind of stuff, um, which I never had to deal with when I had this easy, path along the fence to my back gate because when I walk, I walk along, I did walk until the extension was built to my back gate. Um, there is another access point um, not being blocked by the extension, but it is extremely steep and has boulders at the bottom. So the extension has limited our access and made it increasingly difficult to access. I would like to say that Miss Lynn and her daughter access the area behind our house almost on a daily basis. That's the route that they take to return to their home from walking their dog. I believe you guys have seen a picture of them accessing that way. If you were to visit the site, there's what appears to be an old truck road or a fire access road that is still there. It is clearly the easiest way to access the, the area if you were going to access it. You would never choose to walk down the steep slope next to our fence. Um, I, I would also say that, um, you know, I, I think that, that our family is purposefully being unfairly targeted in this matter. And I think that a, a larger issue of concern to the board would be the fact that the Lens actually have fenced in MCSD property in their backyard. Um, I have the APN maps from the county of all the maps that show that their property at 93 and a half feet jogs inwards towards their property for 63 and a half feet. I have pictures that I've taken of their fence that shows that their fence is straight and they've fenced in a triangular portion of MCSD property. I have all of their plans from their pool when they pulled and submitted their plot plans to the county in 2003 for their pool. They falsified their plot plans with the county and it did not reflect the actual property line as it exists. And I think that their actions tonight, as have also been shown through public record searches of over 50 complaints against me and my family, are deliberate personal attack. And I'd like to present to the board all the property um, maps that show that they actually have MCSD property fenced into their yard.
No. I mean, it, if that is the case, I don't know. I was unaware of it, and all the plans that he's referring to were done by contractors, and so I didn't know, and I would want to rectify that and not take the open space because it's not mine. Um, I might also note it's not on the agenda. And the agenda issue for this board to only talk about is the two fence panels at issue. You want to agendize this other issue that's just been raised for its discretion so to do it. <coughs> Kind of looking at this logically, okay. I've got a scientific brain, and I'm thinking, why didn't the people who moved into the house? And I really apologize for saying this, but why didn't the people who moved into the house do their due diligence and realize that there was this problem with privacy when they started doing things? I mean, there's I have a neighbor down the bottom of my street. Everybody who drives down my street, the headlights go straight into their the front of their house. Every single time. You, you want to remedy it? Remedy that? Do you want to remedy every single time anywhere everybody has headlights coming into their house? I and I really think that this would be setting a precedence, and I think you may end up finding people who will wiggle around and wiggle around and mm -hmm. add a little footage here and add a little extra open space there. And I I'm really apologize for saying this, but I don't like breaking laws. If we have a law that says this, and then you've got an exception, and then you've got another exception, and then you've got another exception, and another exception, I just don't think that you should keep giving out exceptions if it's not something very serious or safety issue or you know, like two exits out of your burning house or whatever. And I I just think they should have known ahead of time what they're getting into. Thank you. All right, I'm gonna bring it back to the board. Uh, any further questions, comments, discussion with the board? Sure. I understand that there was vegetation behind the rear fence earlier, but uh, as we've been talking with the fire chief, uh, he's been, encouraging people to clear the brush and the grass between 30 and 100 feet from rear fence lines. And so they've taken care of the fire safety issue, but it may be inadvertently opened up a headlight issue. Uh, I went up there, I've been up there two times, maybe three to look at it. Uh, I've driven down Westgate towards the Valley. I can see the issue with the headlights. Tonight when I went by, there was a car parked, probably the person was under the bridge doing graffiti, I don't know. I, there was a car parked right at the end of the fence uh, with no apparent reason to be there. Uh, I just, you know, Stephen asked you know, how big the area was. It'd be just over four square feet if you figure the fence is four inches wide and 13 feet long. Yeah. Uh, I very carefully looked at what the alignment of the fence and compared it to the alignment of the Lynn's fence, and it appears to all be going in a straight line. I know that years back, the owner of what I'll say is the mirror image lot to the one Verbena lot, the one at uh, Westgate, I mean Bridgegate, and where the creek is. That owner was about to expand his fence out into the open space when uh, it came to the homeowners association's attention. That never happened, and I think that's something that we can't allow and shouldn't allow because it's making a private use of the public property. Here, I don't believe they are actually eliminating public access. It's no problem to go to walk down the bank from from Westgate. Uh, beyond the end of the fence. I did it in light loafers. Um, I just don't see a problem with granting an encroachment to permit to allow that, provided they clean up the uh, construction material, whatever you want to call it, flagstone, that's piled behind the fence. Um, I don't know if I 
I have not commented yet, so I will say my short bit. Then. Um, so mm -hmm. I agree with what, and I appreciate actually everybody, I want to say thank you for the level of discourse. I know it's unpleasant and uncomfortable to have these kinds of conflicts. Um, so I appreciate everyone being, you know, respectful. Um, I, this is, I think, my seventh year on the board, and the number of times I've seen requests for rights and encroachment on the agenda is less than five. So this is, I feel like, incredibly unusual. And to get two in one night, like, wow. Um, I think that's exactly why we have policies and exactly why we have boards to exercise judgment in making exceptions to those policies. And I feel like this is a reasonable request, odd, and it has a history and it has emotions, as many of these things do. Um, but I certainly would vote in favor of granting the request as stated. Are there any other comments from the board? Um, I'm, I'm looking at the pictures that uh, we were provided in the packet from the officer. And it's, I, I really don't see a reason why you couldn't plan the shrub there. I really don't. Exactly what the fence is. And I, it's, it's not that big of a nuisance to remove the, the fence. And I think once the foliage would would grow, you you could remedy the, the the lights issue in a more pleasing way, aesthetically pleasing, and in keeping with our mission. And I think it would be a nice compromise because you know you would get more privacy from the road, and we could keep the keep the policy and. Uh, my, again, my issue is the equitability. Once we start granting easements, um, there could be a number of them, and everybody will have their valid reason. Um, but it is an awkward fence panel. It's just sticking out. Um, and I, I think we, we, should, we should mitigate it in a more natural way that, that would get the job done. All right, I'm going to call the question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Aye. All right, motion carries 3-2. Does the motion include removing the flagstones? I don't think the original motion did. I will, I will say that I'll remove them. I'll, I'll have them removed tomorrow. Thank you. Would you please repeat your motion and the votes? The motion, I was uh, just as the item is stated, request for right of encroachment on district property. And the motion was to approve. Uh, the motion was to approve. To approve the rest request. With just to approve. three to one, four to one, five, five, five to one, one, six to one. Three to one. Us three voted. Three yes. to one. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Okay. There is also the liability issue. But okay, so the item is closed now. Moving on to item I3, request for right of encroachment on the district property, APA 1642706. <coughs> so we have, do I have a motion to approve? So moved. I have a second. Second. Right, discussion. Uh, again, I have a lead in memo on this topic. Uh, it is a uh, uh, slightly different situation in this one is right now. Uh, oh, left a jump. Someone else. Someone else. Oh, it's the Thank you. Alongside their uh, fence on their property, but it actually sits on district property. Um, again, same situation. They've been provided a notice, asked to move. Uh, they have uh, had communications with myself as well as with the chief and are uh, uh, requesting uh, to be allowed to get keep it parked there. The only thing I would say of note on this one is uh, many years ago when this particular property was deeded uh, to the district, um, primarily through the developer at the time, uh, and Irv I think has more background on this than I do, uh, who's building a senior center on the other side of the hill. One of the conditions was that th that area actually is going to be a trailhead and the developer would be responsible for putting in a trail that's going to run from that point on Las Colinas Avenue up over the hill 
and then eventually down to uh, an area kind of near the school bus yard uh, and the end of Marinwood Avenue. Um, they would build it, the district would maintain it. So what I would say of note on this is if and when that ever does come to fruition and happen, uh, should the board decide to approve this one, there would certainly need to be some uh, revocation language in there that says uh, when this happens, uh, this agreement will be revoked. All right, questions, comments from the board? I started the last one here, let me start. You want some background? Uh, the deed to the property from the owners to the district clearly states that if the property is not used for open space purposes, they have the right to take it back. That's one. Two, the district and the developer entered into an agreement that said that when the assisted living facility was built, the Creekside Trail, there's, there's an old, 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 old graded road bench along the creek that needs some improvement but that that would be improved into a nice trail that runs from Las Colinas Avenue to the extension of Marinwood Avenue. And in that agreement, it says clearly by address that the trailers, whatever, and the, uh, the landscaping debris and that sort of thing was, was to be removed within 90 days of the execution of that agreement back in 2005. Now, for the Codonis, and I assume they're here. Yeah. I wear many hats, and one of my hat is I'm the civil engineer that worked on the Oakview project. And so I sent four or five letters to the Codonis in an attempt to enforce the requirements imposed by the Rinwood Community Services District Board of Directors to get them to clean their material and stored items off of the district property. And after four or five letters, one of them returned re certified return receipt, and a threat that we had hired someone uh, to remove all their items from the property, they finally cleared the property off. Sometime after that, they moved back on. The last time I saw the property, all that was there was the mobile home. And they had spread gravel in the area of the mobile home on the open space. But the time before, aside from the mobile home, there were two trailers and a bunch of landscape sort of material back there. Thankfully, that's all cleaned off at least. But it just, the district, I think, is causing themselves a potential problem if the property owner were wanting, I don't know if they would, to take this property back. And it's a big chunk of property. Uh, but the, the, they required that this area be cleaned up, and it was. And now it's returned to what it was. It was something I did just for the heck of it. The, the mobile home is about 33 feet long. Uh, I, I called a, a RV storage place up in Novato. I figured, based on where it was, it would be probably the least expensive one in Marin. And based on what they they told me about $215 a foot is what they get per month to store that kind of a vehicle. And if you figure that the uh, district took ownership uh, August 1, 2005, I believe, if we had charged $200 a month rent to park that RV there, the Cadonians would, would owe us, as of now, $28,800. That's probably what they're saving by parking their RV on our open space. I don't see any reason for that vehicle to be there. I see it as a problem for the district. Uh, to say you can, you can leave it there for a year or two years or three years till the trail is built and a vehicle barrier installed along the back of the sidewalk there, I think is just looking for trouble. I, I do not I would not vote to approve this encroachment. Oh, thank you for all the information. I uh, did not have the background, nor the numbers, nor the knowledge that you have. But um, again, having just voted nay on the other issue and uh, citing my reason to be equitable and equal in uh, applying the policy, 
um, I will also be voting no on this. Okay, um, questions, comments from the public? Stephen. Well, uh, Irv did a brilliant crisp analysis. I can't improve on that, but I do want to add a couple, a couple things. First of all, that property, as well as the Kedoni's house, in fact, rests within the stream conservation area. You've got a vehicle there, if it's leaking oil, it's going into the groundwater. I have a real problem with that. And also, you know, public land is public land. So we, we, you know, it's property rights. And I don't know why that is, isn't the issue, why we're talking about ordinances. It's, it's about property rights. We certainly don't allow our neighbors to encroach on our land. And, and I don't even know why these issues are even, you know, the, the cause for discussion. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I totally agree with what Herb said, and I, I think uh, we need to uh, take care of our land. Okay. You brought up a good point. I know where there's a huge um, RV parked on Blackstone, and it's been there forever and ever and ever and ever. Mm -hmm. And that is, if you look at the original Greenwood ordinances, RVs are not even supposed to be parked in driveways. And business trucks with, you know, the, the sign on the side, those are not even supposed to be parked on the street or in driveways. They're supposed to be out of sight. So you do have a lot of, I'm not going to say a lot, I know of a few RVs that are illegally parked due to the ordinances of Marinwood, but nobody enforces them. So here you've got an RV parked in an open space, which is a little bit different than parked in front of a house or parked in the driveway. But I really have no opinion. I just wanted to bring up that there are others against the law with RVs. Thank you. Other comments from the public? Mm -hmm. I'm Maria Cadoni. Um, here to support our agreement. Um, our family has lived at this residence for over 33 years. Um, the Cadonis have lived there for over 40 years because his, my husband's grandparents lived there. Um, we have dedicated many hours to this community, um, as I stated in our letter to the board. Um, you might think what's What's the point of that? Well, we're very involved in the community to make sure that things are kept safe, our kids are safe. I've been involved with the St. Vincent School for Boys, safety routes to school, um, including that little black fence around that park. I mentioned that over 10 years ago for that to happen. Uh, Mary Silvera, Nora Creek, coaching at Terra Linda High School for 12 years and I'm also on the board at the Dixie Schoolhouse. Um, for over 32 years, the side of the yard has never been maintained by anyone except us, and that includes also behind the fence. Um, we have always maintained it by cutting down or mowing down all the weeds for fire prevention since we've been there. Our family has consistently taken this responsibility upon ourselves to create a defensible fire space and keep it clean from debris. Our new RV that does not have any oil leaks is consistently covered, unnoticeable from the street, pretty much, and allows ample space along to the open space. Me, and I have pictures on my phone, which I'm willing to share with you then. It's like at least 25, 30 feet to the side and you can get to the back open space as well. Our family vehicles, yes, we have had, um, we've never had two trailers <coughs> as stated. We've always only had one or a boat behind it for over 30 years. And we have never experienced any complaints or issues ever. If, uh, the current RV location looks though it's on private property, which has also prevented non-local transients from roaming through 
to the open space. And you might think that, that that might be something that's like, um, I don't know about that, but um, one of the reasons why a lot of even the younger kids have not gone back there is because of the motorhome, because it almost looks like you're not supposed to go back there because it looks like it is private space. Um, it's a new RV. It's a 2014. Our neighbors and sheriff have said the RV is not noticeable. Um, I have a neighbor that's four houses down. He didn't even know we had a motorhome down there. And um, I don't know if I'm supposed to rebuttal anything, but um, I'm just going to say it. Um, Irv said that there, we sent a certified letter. Uh, do you have a copy of that letter? I do. Can I see it, please? Sure. It has your signature on it, probably. Okay. At least it starts with an M. I'd like to see that. There it is. There's a return receipt from the post office. And the letter's in here? It's just in front of that, I think. There's three or four letters that ask you to clean up the property. No, the letter that was sent back saying that we rejected something? No, I didn't say that. No, I say you ignored the letters till we sent the last one. Okay, let's see what you said. That's not what I heard when you said before. Sorry. Okay. Um, anyway, um, I don't know how to plead this anymore except that uh, always giving back to our community. We're great people. We're not there to um, infringe on anybody. I understand that there's other motorhomes in around Rainwood, but um, uh, I don't know. We're not doing anything wrong. I understand it's on your property. Um, collecting rent and that whole thing. Uh, I don't know. We're not trying to save money by putting it there. It's like we've always had our motorhome or our boats there. So, Can I just one thing? my daughter has something to say. Um, in the sense of the oil leaking, my dad here is a mechanic, so that is something that is heavily watched and monitored, and we would never want to put our creek at jeopardy for that reason. Thank you. And I have um, one more thing. Um, oh, yeah, I just wanted to say that about any oil leak or going down into the creek. Uh, there's no oil leaks like she mentioned. We take care of our creek. Someone left a, like a foam thing, a mattress thing. We're always down there cleaning that up. Uh, no one's ever come by. Whoever took down the trees for like the creek and stuff, they left everything there. We cleaned it all up, meaning the big rounds. I mean, our motorhome is covered, and I understand that there's other motorhomes in the neighborhood, but no one has someone, no one has like our motorhome where it's like taken care of. The gravel is there so that when it rains, it's not like, you know, it's not like ruining the land or anything. That's why we put the gravel down and we put, we let the weeds come through it and stuff. So anyway, I'm hoping that you do approve this and change your minds. Um, it's just, I don't know. It's just our motorhome has always been there. It's been part of our family. Any other comments for, from the public? Linda? Could I just ask a quick question? Um, all the other RVs that I've seen that are scattered throughout Marinewood, they're okay unless somebody complains. So it's is it after a complaint or is it after five complaints or is it a, you know is there a policy that says how many complaints you have to get? Before, the other, yeah. the other motorhomes that you're like ones that are parked on the street. That's not our jurisdiction. That would be uh, like the sheriff, you know. People oh, right, who, the street. You're right. The street is that. Right. Yeah, this is the situation where it's on our property. But uh, things that are parked in people's driveways, like the ordinance you mentioned, isn't a Marinwood CSD ordinance because we have no jurisdiction over that whatsoever. That'd be more of a county ordinance, and then it'll be enforced by the sheriff. So if they're parking it on their own property, even right. though the old 60-year-old yeah. ordinance says it's not allowed. We don't have that authority. We've yeah. never had that authority. Park, uh -huh. rec, fire, street lights. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Right. Um, yeah, last just, last just, round. I'm going to go fence around here. Stephen? 
Yeah, uh, if you do approve uh, this one private use of uh, parking for an RV, I think uh, it would be equitable. I actually had to check to, to even more, but you'd have to make it uh, available to other people that have the problem with parking. Uh, so they would need to park in our, our, our park open space. In other words, it doesn't make sense. I, as much as it's an inconvenience for them to park it elsewhere, it's our park property. It's, it's our, our, our place, and it, it, it's not theirs. And that's really as simple as it gets. Um, so I just want to speak to it. I'm obviously here with them as well in support of it because um, I think if you were to drive by and it is a small community, you don't see it. You, it's, pulled, it's pulled back. You see it when you look, absolutely, but it's pulled back far from the street. It does signify there's a lot of, could be a lot of kids playing there, so it does keep it safer in that area for kids. <laughs> and in the spirit of being a community, I really appreciate how they constant, constantly are cleaning up the creek. They're down there when she used to work as a, as a coach. You know, the teams would go down there. They would do community service in that area also. Um, I think that it's been an, a tacit agreement for a long time. I know you went back to 2005, and they have since. It, I mean, the, it looks very cleaned up and very well managed, and it seems ludicrous to me until that is made more of a thoroughfare as you guys had said it was going to be made to have them then probably park it on the street and then block views of everything and and create more of a hazard on the street if it's taking up more room it just kind of seems you know it's a small community you know you're a resident for 30 40 years and I just think that sometimes it's, it's better to err on the side of that instead of getting muddled up in the um, in the little things like that. Thank you. Any other comments? Do you know what I have to say something? Tom Roach Community Member has to say something. I've known Kevin and Marie a long time, and they are long-standing community-based people who've done a lot for Marinewood over the years. Um, the trailer has been there for a long time. Um, I view them as top shelf community members, and I hope the board considers that when they make their decision. Thank you. All right. Anything else um, from the board? Eric? Well, the motion is to approve the encroachment, am I correct? Yes. So it, gonna... it would appear that if it were going to be approved, there should be some uh, language as to when it should come off. And there should be some language about rent, both from 2005 and moving on. I hope you don't do any of this, but so I, I don't think it has anything to do with the fact that they're good people. It has the fact it has to do with the fact that this is the open space that was given to Marinwood as open space, and Marinwood off ordered that their trailers and whatever be removed from the property. And they did it, and then they sort of oozed it back on. Because when I looked at it, it must have been the boat on the trailer and another trailer. Because the other trailer is just inside your fence now, and the boat's in your driveway. I saw at least two trailers of some sort back there behind the RV. Well, let me, um, let me call the question if we need to change anything, then we can. So the current motion is to approve the request for right of encroachment. So all those in favor? All those opposed? No. No. All those abstaining? So the motion does not carry. No's abstain. Everyone good? You got that? OK. Um, thank you for everyone who was here, too. Can I just um, and, and I just. I appreciate your service to the community. We all are sitting every month here for four or five hours a stretch in service to the community. And um, it, it's a hard break when you have to, you know, whether move the fence or move your car that has always been there. But my logic is if I say yes to you because 
you, you are an awesome gal, there will be another person who will also have a valid reason to park their vehicle somewhere next to their home, in the open space, etc. And once I draw the line, this is where it gets fuzzy. And that's why I want to keep it to the policy of the district, and that's why I said no to both of them. So I hope you understand it the same way I was trying to understand your situation. All right, moving on to item I-4, Recreation and Park Maintenance Activity Report. All right. Well, we're, we uh, just kicked off our fifth week of our summer programming. Um, uh, a lot going on. We uh, so we've had four weeks of our of our summer camps and swim lessons and, and a bunch of specialty camps. And everything's going very well. Uh, it's it's been really uh, fun to see uh, everything we've been planning for since last September, basically all coming into fruition. And um, the staff are doing great. Uh, the kids seem to be having fun. It's all been very well organized, and um, I've been very impressed uh, watching the, the camps go with kind of with the new lens that I um, you know have in this position. Uh, the pool's been running great, and um, our new supervisor uh, Lacey has been uh, integrating into her role really well and, and uh, learning the programs and, and getting along well with staff and running the trainings. And it's been really fun to be able to kind of pass that torch and hand that off to her. And, um, we're, very, we're very pleased with the way uh, the summer has, uh, um, has started out. Uh, we've now had two installments of our summer music series. Uh, we had Sal's Greenhouse uh, a couple of weeks ago, and then uh, King, Kingsboro played last week. And um, both were great turnouts, um, good music. Everyone seemed to have a great time. And we're looking forward to uh, the next couple of installments. The next event is our Summer Brew Fest, which is uh, a week from this Saturday, uh, July 28th. And we've got uh, a bunch of great breweries lined up with some live music. I don't have uh, the list of who's playing um, at this moment. Um, Bill has secured some money for that. And I hope you guys will all uh, join us there. It should be a really good time. And hoping the weather uh, stays as great as it's been. Um, we are now already starting to look at the fall. Uh, we've got our fall classes and programs uh, starting to be scheduled and we're working on our, our uh, Marine review and, and advertising materials to get the information about fall and winter, which it's um, challenging to do at this time of year, but we're going we'll to work on that and we'll um, you know, you know, announce things as they come up for the fall schedule. Uh, any questions about the, rec the recreation side of things? Yeah, Leah. So I highlighted that the camps are mostly full. So have we now sort of maxed out our capacity and enrollment? Because for so long it was like, you know, we were playing catch up, but mostly full indicates that they're not full. Right. There's, a, I mean, there's like a handful of spots some weeks. Uh, things. Some of the older camps tend to fill up week to week, so um, we are not 100% full. There are still spots for people to, to take further on in the summer, um, but we've been pretty full um, week to week with all the camps. The specialty camps don't always fill up. Um, we've got a lot of new, different things we're trying out there. And um, so we're continuing to advertise, and uh, but enrollment is, is um, above what we've had in the past and what we're expecting. And so um, enrollment is, is you know, more right where we want it to be. So that's so, yeah. Okay. Uh, Thank you. I, I, I'm sorry, go ahead. A couple of weeks ago on a Monday, I drove past the community center in the park and it apparently was the opening day of our camp season. And it appeared like there were thousands of kids yeah. in multicolored shirts just <laughs> all over the place. And it just looked really, really good. And I was very impressed. And, and thank you, Luke, and your staff. And then to add a little icing on the cake, I continue on Miller Creek Road, and I make the turn by Quiet, by Queenstone. And there's the county fire department transport with the bulldozer on it, getting ready to repair the road. And I think, hey, this is a really neat neighborhood I live in. Look at all the action going on here. So uh -huh. thank you, staff, all your staff, for uh, working real hard at, at doing some neat things for our uh, residents. Appreciate that. Uh, kudos to Robin, who's been overseeing the camp program. She's a great group of supervisors. And I'm just, uh, you know, 
watching, learning, uh, and, and helping them as much as I can. But it's um, yeah, she's done a great job of planning a really, really cool summer. So uh, when you see her, can give her a you know, high five. I just wanted to follow up with, on two things too with Leah on your. Uh, I mean, it's pretty common that as you get older into the camps, they don't quite. Uh, you know, we plan and budget these things accordingly, and how and what we're looking at. Uh, I can promise you all of the you know elementary grades and below still have very long waiting lists on the traditional camps, but the older camps is not unique to Marinwood. Um, just as kids get older, they get a little bit more freedom, a little bit more ability to do uh, uh, things on their own. Um, and then I, I, I just have to draw attention under the summer programs where, uh, to, and I really appreciate the fact that Luke put this in here because when you just look at it as a whole, uh, 14 summer day camps, 30 specialty camps, 14 daily group swim lessons, 40 daily private swim lessons, counselor and training and guards and training, 150 camp staff overseen by five camp supervisors, 60 aquatic staff including five senior guys. Just gives you in one quick snapshot the breadth of what they're doing and what, you know, add that in with the 500 plus kids that are coming in every day. So Luke has done a tremendous job and Robin uh, has really knocked it out of the park uh, with the, I might get in the program. I walk around often and look at it, and they're just, I've heard nothing but great things from other parents as well. It's a really, really good setup this year. Awesome. All right. Uh, we have parking. Yeah. Yeah. Hold on. Oh. Or, or, sorry, because you'd ask our questions on recreation activities. Did you want to go over the parking report also? Yeah, I can do, I, if you want to hold, I can, I'll go cover the parks and we talk about it. Oh, about well, it wasn't parks. Actually, I would rather comment on the red program. Um, is, that, is that okay? Yeah, it's because, um, well, first of all, yeah, great work as usual. I guess we're at capacity. You know, I'm a, I love, uh, I love our open space. I love our parks, and I think that one piece that's missing in the rec program is um, like an adventure camp in the open space. Open space focused. And I would, that would draw in the older. Uh, older campers, it could be maybe mountain biking or an array of adventure activities up in the hills. And uh, it's training, training kids to be physically active and to learn the outdoors. And I, I, I think it's just an untapped opportunity that we, uh, or a resource that we have, and it's, it's an opportunity. So I hope you consider that for the future. Thank you. Uh... Yeah, um, so I, and just to answer that, Stephen, yeah, I, I totally agree. Some of our um, older camps, some of our specialty camps, do take advantage of the of the open space and the trails, and, and they do do um, certain themed weeks. They'll take advantage of that. Some we do have some weeks where the, the kids are able to bring their bikes, and we'll do a little bit of mountain bike, you know, limited. Uh, and uh, we have had some things like that in the past. So it's definitely on our radar. It just depends on you know what, what agencies and groups are available and you know interested. So. Uh, but I appreciate that. Uh, moving on. Uh, we, yeah, oh yeah, sorry. Have we thought about you utilizing them for cleaning up open space for fire protection? <laughs> the, the camp kids? <laughs> I like it. It's a <laughs> <weed hours. laughs> It's a camp. It's all Tom's weed whack camp. Rush clean. <laughs> I like that. Idea. Uh, Start but to answer your question, Bill, no. We have not considered that uh, yet. <laughs> Uh, as far as the uh, park and maintenance activities go, uh, right now, uh, keeping things, um, trying to keep things uh, repaired and working as uh, as the kids are, um, you know, making heavy use out of all of our um, all of our grounds and, and playgrounds and turf. Um, so, been a lot of uh, a lot of maintenance on the turf, um, on the irrigation, um, and just doing a lot of landscape um, kind of. Sprucing up in the various areas we have. Uh, we did complete an uh, extension of the fence along the far field, uh, along the drainage. I think we might have talked about that last time, um, and a little bit around the bend uh, for safety. And we've been um, had a little bit of uh, tree assessment and some pruning in the, um, along the far field, as well as in the fireman's picnic area, just some dead limbs and uh, things like that. Um, Plan for upcoming, we um, have made some repairs to the playground, We're cleaning up some of the landscaping of the two entrances to Marinewood, and a couple repairs to uh, some broken stuff in the kitchen. Um, 
Um, we're looking ahead, we've got a few, uh, a few other things coming down the pike that we're, we're preparing for. Um, that was a strange timing. Oh, yeah, no, I, I, can, I can wrap it up. Yeah, no, that's fine. No, we've got some ro repairs to the tennis courts scheduled for, uh, for August uh, coming up, and, um, and then, yeah, that's kind of the gist of it. Any questions about park maintenance? Uh, the berm along Lucas Valley Road, just westerly of Bridgegate, uh, yeah. looks like a disaster. It really, there's thistles about three feet high. It looks like the county went through with their flailing machine, kind of took care of the edge, and probably land design then went from there back on the area easterly of Bridgegate. But westerly of Bridgegate is really a mess, and there's a, a huge dead shrub or almost tree farther up, closer to West Key. It's been there, I think, for a year now, and no one cleans it up or cuts it out. Do you know between Bridgegate and Westgate, the berm between those two? Well, there's two sections of berm. The immediate, the berm immediately adjacent to Bridgegate, westerly, needs weed whacking badly. Gotcha, no, I... Then the next section of berm that ends at Westgate, there's a huge dead shrub right in the middle of it. Uh, it's on our radar. Um, there was a, a land design is taking care of the berms out there. I know they've got they've re-diverted them to a couple extra projects this last couple weeks. Um, the dead tree is uh, on our on our list for us to take care of, so we'll, we'll get to that. Um, we are aware of it though. I wasn't checking up on them. I was going out to look at one verbena court. Oh, hey, you got to look around while you're out there. Uh, Thank you. Uh, anything else from the board? Uh, yeah, uh, first of all, um, back to this, uh, it would be very helpful, I think, for the community to see story poles. We've got a 15-foot edifice. It's a very large building. I put in flags to show my neighbors basically what is going on there, but it, it would be better if a, an official uh, uh, demarcation was there. I think. Once people see that, they may really question this whole project, as, with, as I hope that you guys are with what I've told you about the access. Uh, it's really very uh, inefficient. Um, and I just wanted to make one comment. You know, today while we were, I was looking at this, I saw, once again, uh, the guys are using the uh, open space field as a turnaround, and my gosh, I. Every, every month I'm here saying, please, please take care of our open space better. And I don't know, it just doesn't filter down. And I, I would hope that uh, instead of looking like that as a, uh, that you treat this as a 14.12 acre estate and, and really, really take care of things carefully and not, not just use it as a place to park trucks. So. Anyhow, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Uh, so the date of the next PNR Commission meeting is July 24th. Moving on to item J1, new and other business. Request for future meeting agenda items. Sir? I have one. Uh, I don't want to blame Linda, but, uh, but she caused something to happen that maybe we need to have a policy about. And, and it's, the county has, the same, has a policy like this. And that is if someone wants printed material, documents, or whatever, that there's a base number that the district will provide for free, like 10, the first 10 pages or something. And beyond that, there's a cost recovery formula. That's actually part of the uh, records management policy that has been um, it, it slowed down a tad because one of the comments we received from Jeff was to actually provide an itemized schedule for each document that, that the district has in its possession, which will be a humongous time-consuming task for <coughs> Eric and the rest of the staff to really identify all of the documents. So that's why it's, it's been taking a long time. But, um, 
and um, also once we identify those documents, we'll have to find the appropriate legalese that defines how long we have to keep this record in whatever form we have to keep this record, so that would be more my homework at some point. Uh, but part of that policy is actually response to um, requests for uh, documents and uh, there is section for electronic and for paper. And yes, there is a, a nominal nominal sum that's associated with providing paper copies that is allowed by law. Thank you. Thank you. Looks like we don't need to add it to the agenda. Any other requests for future meeting agenda items? Any from the public? Stephen? Well, uh, yeah. I mean, we got uh, this needs to be discussed this, uh, in, in publicly. I, I, I mean, I thought we were going to have a conversation before everything uh, went into play, but but I think the sooner you do it, the better off you're going to be. You, you guys' names are going to be on this, um, so I would encourage you to do it sooner rather than later. Okay, thank you. Linda? Yeah, um, I surprise, surprise, I have something new. Uh, when I was mentioning Measure A and how Measure A is for special districts to enhance their parks, nature preserves, recreation, and to reduce wildfire risk, several board members and people in the audience didn't realize that reducing wildfire risk was part of the reasoning behind Measure A, behind my tax money. So I would like to add, and I know you've already put in your request or your ideas to the county about what you plan on spending your Measure A money on, but I would like to have a discussion because we've never had a discussion about it. The Park and Rec Commission has always made the decisions to spend all of our Measure A money on Park and Rec. So I would just, I think it'd be nice if we have a little discussion on how to use Measure A funds for reducing wildfire risk. Thank you. All right, item K, recognitions and board member items of interest. I would, I'm hesitant to say this, but I would <laughs> like to recognize Stephen Nessel and Bill Nicholas for the uh, outstanding job they've been doing with the uh, plaza cleanup. And I gotta commend them heavily. It pains me to do this. <laughs> <laughs> when we agree on things and we're on a team, so there don't go. don't feel don't feel bad about that. I, there are things I I commend you on as well. Uh, but but uh, but anyhow I I can I speak to that because I actually would love to the agenda. Wait, wait, wait. The agenda. Yeah 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 this is a Oh, okay. okay. Well, some people care about the community <laughs> and toxic waste. Thank you. Um, any other recognition support member items of interest? Any comments from the public? Okay. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye.